A while back, I did a review of Godzilla, the 2014 film, and I mentioned how much I liked Brian Cranston in it. He wasn't in it very much, but I thought he was the best part of the movie. Uh, I mentioned that he's probably best known for Breaking Bad, and admitted I hadn't seen the show, but I heard it was excellent. Of course, that opened the floodgates. I got several messages urging me to watch it, saying it was the best TV show ever. Now, when I brought it up, I was kind of fetching. I wanted to know, how good of a show is it, and was it worth putting 60 hours into, or whatever it was? And from what I was told, the answer is yes. And let me tell you, you'd be really surprised if I told you all the TV shows I haven't seen. If I were to reel them all off and added up all the hours for each one, it would amount to my entire lifetime. It would be impossible to watch everything. I typically stick to movies. I'm not much of a TV person, and the simple reason is because I don't have time, especially with kids. Committing to an entire show is a lot different than two hours for a movie. You know, typically two hours, you're done. Um, and I'm a fan of three-act structure. I like stories with beginning, middle, and ends. Uh, TV shows are typically designed to go on indefinitely. At least Breaking Bad ended, which made it a little bit easier for me to tackle. The premise seemed mildly interesting. A chemistry professor has cancer and begins cooking and selling crystal meth to pay for his treatment and to provide for his family. I wasn't sure how far you could take that idea, but I gave it a chance and started watching it about a year ago. So halfway into the first season, I'm thinking to myself, this is good, but not real good. I almost stopped there. Other movies and shows started pushing themselves in the way. I've been watching uh, some Black Mirror, for example, which I find is hit or miss, but when it's good, it's amazing. Anyway, a year goes by, and finally I get back to Breaking Bad. All I want is to finish the first season. That's it. Uh, then at least I can say I saw a whole season and I know what the show's about. Yeah. Well, uh, guess what? Um, by the end of the first season, specifically as soon as the character Tuco was introduced, I got hooked. And where that season ends, like on a cliffhanger, it was no place to stop. So I figured, okay, I'll dip into season two. Uh, well, then the show just kept getting better and I became obsessed. Like, fuck it, I'm watching them all now. I, so I put a stop to everything else, trying to fit time to watch one episode per night until I watched all 62 episodes. Done. And now that I've made it to the finish line, I can say all the praise it got was well-deserved. If I thought people were making too big a deal out of it, I would say so. But that is not the case. Best TV show of all time, or one of the best, is no exaggeration. I don't say this lightly, but judging at least from all the shows I've seen, this is the best, with the only exception of The Twilight Zone, uh, which is a totally different thing anyway. And I wasn't watching it with any intention of doing a review, it was just for myself, but damn, it's too good not to share. So I put all that time in, why not? Uh, it doesn't need the attention, it, it, the show's probably had enough, but now that the hype has died down, I kind of feel like Sometimes that's the best time to go back and, you know, reevaluate things. So, wow, where do I begin with this? How do I sum up 62 episodes? Well, first I'll speak vaguely, vague as hell. This is my spoiler free section. If you haven't seen the show, I'll describe it as a crime drama, but with elements of Western film noir. Uh, it has the suspense of Hitchcock, the witty dialogue of Tarantino, the visual language of Sergio Leone. If it borrows from anything, it only borrows from the best and becomes its own thing. Plot details that seem unimportant at first come back into the story later on. Everything gets followed through. Seeds are planted, which amount to mind-blowing conclusions. When tragedy strikes, it's so distressing and feels so real, you have to remind yourself it's not. Characters are forced into situations where they have to make really difficult decisions. There's always more than one angle to consider. You find yourself debating and questioning the character's judgment. It's never predictable. It always seems like there's several possible outcomes and you can't stop watching until you find out what happens. Relationships between characters are always changing. One minute they're friends, then they're enemies. Characters are always keeping secrets from one another. Sometimes the audience is in on the lie. You can tell by their faces what they say is not what they mean. 
Other times the secrets are kept from the audience and when it comes out, it's a total shocker. You come to know characters so well, you can recognize where they've been by a prop, like a cell phone, a watch, a pair of glasses, and sometimes just seeing a silhouette or a back of a head is enough to make you go, oh shit, guess who just came in? Characters have no fear of danger. They will walk into gunfire and call each other's bluffs. Sometimes the information given to the audience is shown out of sequence, so we're given only pieces of the puzzle before it all falls into place. Sometimes a simple cut or a lapse in time makes your heart stop thinking, what just happened? What it decides to show and what not to show amplifies the suspense to its maximum potential. Sometimes you vicariously go along with the character's bad deeds, wondering how you'd do it yourself, and then you just feel dirty. It makes you wonder how much pressure could you take before you'd resort to doing such terrible things. The most interesting thing about the show is how there's no clear good guy or bad guy. A film professor once told me in Film Noir, it's only bad guys and worse guys. It pulls you in so many directions that you love characters one minute and hate them the next. In the same way, I both love and hate this show. I love it because it's excellent, but I hate it because it caused me so much anxiety. Now, on to my spoiler section. I advise stopping here if you haven't seen the show. The last few minutes of my stupid video might seem like a shortcut to those 60 hours or whatever it takes to watch the show, but I say take the 60 hours and just put up with the first season. It gets better. Okay, now on to the spoilers. Of course, you could talk about this moment, that moment, but there's not enough time. I'm not gonna bog you down with many plot details. I'm gonna assume you've seen it and uh, just wanna ask, which character do you root for? Undeniably, the acting is amazing all across the board, every single one of them, but how do you feel about the characters? First, there's Walt. Okay, now when I first started watching, I didn't know where the show was going. I didn't know that he was going to be like an anti-hero, uh, that he was gonna change from an ordinary father and professor into a full-fledged badass drug lord. If you don't know who I am, tread lightly. Damn. At first I liked him because he seemed like he was forced into a desperate situation with his cancer and that by selling meth he was providing for his family. Yeah, it still makes him a criminal right from the get-go, but I wanted to see him succeed because I wanted his family taken care of, especially his son, Walt Jr. Flynn, and his newborn daughter, Holly. Uh, they were completely innocent characters. I didn't want to see anything bad happen to them. But as his criminal activities went on, it started putting his family in jeopardy to the point where it wasn't worth it. Then there's his lying. He kept lying and lying, and I just kept thinking, tell the truth, you asshole. He kept making it worse. So I lost sympathy for him. But as soon as Gus threatened to kill his whole family, including his baby, I was with Walt. I was rooting for him to kill Gus for the safety of his family. Now, to go forward from that moment, what did Walt end up doing? He ended up poisoning a child named Brock, but just enough to make him sick in a complicated effort to turn Jesse against Gus, and it didn't even work that way. So which is worse, the possibility of baby Holly getting murdered by Gus or Brock getting non-lethal poisoning by Walt? Both are horrible options, but you gotta go with which is the least horrible. So through all that, I wanted to see Gus get killed and applauded when it finally happened, but poisoning Brock, and, and not to mention making Jesse kill Gail, made it pretty hard to like Walt after that. Winding backwards, the reason Gus threatened Walt's family in the first place was because Walt's brother-in-law, Hank, the DEA agent, was investigating Gus's operations. Walt tried everything he could to keep Hank away. If Hank would have stayed out of it, things wouldn't have gotten so out of hand. Walt was even trying to get out of the meth business at certain points. And how about when he allowed Jane to die? She was choking to death on her vomit after a heroin overdose, and he just stood there. You can tell he's contemplating the options, and I'm still not even sure why he did it. I think it was because she blackmailed him, or she'd get in the way of his plans with Jesse, or even get Jesse to overdose himself eventually. Whatever was Walt's line of thinking, I couldn't help but hate him after that. Seeing her die was devastating. Then, of course, her father, who works in air traffic control, gets so upset, he causes two planes to crash, killing hundreds of people. The cause and effect on this show just runs your brain in circles. 
Then Walt has the nerve to downplay the tragedy when speaking at the school. So there's plenty to hate about this guy, but his devotion for family never ceases. He goes to such great lengths to protect Hank from Gus and Tuco's cousins who come back for revenge. Reminder, it was Hank who shot Tuco. When the cousins shoot Hank, Walt pays for Hank's medical bills and somehow still seems to take the blame for his situation. Then when Hank is fatally shot by the neo-Nazis, Walt was begging them not to do it. You see in his face that he is devastated by the death of his brother-in-law who had just arrested him moments ago. Then he takes the blame for Hank's death. So that definitely gave me back a lot of sympathy for Walt. Then he saves his family and Jesse from the neo-Nazis. He gets his family the money in the most clever way possible and gets out of everybody's lives. So after all's done, I cared about him and can say it's the closest I ever felt to such a dangerous, horrible character. After going along with the whole ride, it sure makes you feel like a dirty accomplice. Now the other characters, what about Hank? Am I alone in thinking, this guy's a fucking asshole? He has moments when I like him. He's a good cop. He took down Tuco. He's a hero to a certain degree. But to begin with, he had these racist undertones, which seemed to go away as the series went on. But then he turned into a violent monster acting out of anger. He goes into a bar and beats some guys, brutally slamming one of their faces into a table, spurting blood everywhere like cheese. Then he barges into Jesse's home and beats him nearly to death with his bare fists. How could anybody like this guy after that? That was something Tuco would have done. I mean, that's the level Hank stooped to. And it totally went outside the realms of justice and it was all about Hank not being able to control his temper. He is a complete disgrace to the DEA. He was rightfully let go. But when he comes back on the case and discovers it's Walt, what does he do? Punches Walt in the face! He doesn't even learn from his mistakes. Hank is terrifying. He is a big, bad bully. Not to mention, he was willing to get Jesse killed in order to get evidence on Walt. And as terrible as Walt was, compare Walt's compassion for family to Hank's. Hank gave no regard to the fact that Walt was his brother-in-law who tried to save his life and paid his medical bills. Hank was driven only by anger and his own personal pride on the investigation, just wanting to be the one to crack the case just to make himself look good. Fuck Hank, I want him to burn in hell. But I love that I got so invested in it, and I think the whole conflict, the poker game between Walt and Hank, was the strongest thread in the series. To me, there's no good guy or bad guy. It's just two opposing characters that, when mixed together, make an explosive compound, much like chemistry, which the show is about. And that's what makes entertaining drama. Put them together and watch them blow. Hank's wife, Marie, holy shit. I don't think I have time to get into how horrible she is. When she smacks Skylar in the face, boy, what a violent couple Hank and Marie make. When Marie tries to take the baby Holly from Skylar, that was so horrible I could barely watch. She puts so much blame on Skylar for hiding her husband's secret when she couldn't even admit to her habit of stealing shit. Skylar, Walt's wife of course, is definitely a victim to a lot of what goes on. I hated when Walt lied to her and I was glad when she put the pieces together and figured it out for herself. But when she fucks her boss, that was uncalled for. Cheating on her husband is no solution. So I hated her too. <laughs> I gotta talk about Gus now. Uh, I was really impressed with how they handled his character. They made him so frightening. And after Tuco, I thought nobody could be worse. Tuco was insane. Getting hopped up on meth and murdering people with his bare fists. After Tuco died, I thought the series would go downhill. What could top that? But then came Gus. Gus was an entirely different approach. Tuco was stupid evil, but Gus is smart evil. A villain who hides out in the open. Just a store manager who comes and asks, is your food to your liking? You know from the start that there's something about this guy, but you just have to wait to see what he's all about. He's a distant type of villain, the kind who hides behind mystery, has a network of helpers around him, making it hard for the protagonist to get close. Gus has security cameras everywhere. You feel like when he's not in a scene, he's still watching. He has eyeballs all over the world. He's like Sauron from Lord of the Rings. 
But when he is close, he'll do something unexpected like slash somebody's throat and act casual about it. At one point, he's the most terrifying and cunning character. In order for Walt to outsmart him, he has to become more evil himself. So I think Gus has a lot of effect on Walt's journey into bad. Oh, and there's Hector, by the way. In a series with so many amazing characters, I mean, he was, in a way, the best in the most minimal sense. That he communicates only by ringing a bell, and there is so much suspense just waiting. Is he going to do one ding or two? Then there's the lawyer, Saul. And if there's any comic relief characters, it's him. I know there's a spinoff show, Better Call Saul. Of course, I'm going to have to watch that, too. Saul is connected with so many characters, it seems like he's the center of the universe. When he says he knows a guy who knows a guy, I was impressed that you actually meet the guy in between. And yeah, Mike, what an amazing character. A tough guy, intimidating. Just his face staring at you is enough to make you shit your pants. Now I'm trying to get to the answer to the question. Who do you root for? I think it's Jesse and all the kids. Holly is just an innocent baby. Flynn is so genuine and lovable. And when Marie forces Skylar into telling Flynn that his father is a drug lord, something she's fought so hard to keep secret for the whole series, it is completely heartbreaking. And of course, there's Brock, who I already mentioned. It pains you to see anything bad happen to him or any of these kids. So let's talk about Jesse. I'm not forgetting that he killed some people, but he was forced to. Without getting into it all and all the details, um, Jesse is the only main character who's directly involved with the meth business, who comes out of it deserving sympathy. I think he's like the voice of reason. He's always trying to do the right thing. At least three times, a child is killed or nearly killed, and he seems like the only one who truly cares. The safety of children is at the top of his concern. And in general, Jesse's personality is just like a lot of people I knew in college. He's very real. Uh, I get no sense that he's acting. I feel like they just grabbed a real person and put him in there. He definitely screws up a lot, but after all, he's human. You feel like a lot of the things he did was because he was forced into, and he feels guilt over bad things he's done and learns from the past. I just wanted to forgive him and see him make it through all right. There's probably a lot more to mention and so many angles to consider. There's no way I can get through everything. So I'll close on one thing, my favorite episode. Let me say, I do not think this episode represents what the show is about. I think the tone is completely off. It sticks out like a sore thumb. I understand it's a polarizing episode. It's the one with the fly. The reason I single this one out is because it's a single episode. The rest of the episodes all rely on each other uh, in the grand context of the story. But this one, you could slice it out of the series and it would be its own little movie. Another big reason I like it is because the whole thing takes place in the meth lab. I know it was for budget reasons, but this is the only chance you get in the whole series to just immerse yourself in one place. I like that this episode takes time to breathe without jumping all over the place. We just settle down with Walt and Jesse, and that's when I like the show best, when it's the Walt and Jesse show. The way they get on each other's nerves and argue are my favorite moments. Now, sure, the idea of this episode is absurd. It's all about Walt trying to catch a fly. I was extremely frustrated seeing this total badass turned into a stooge, falling everywhere, hurting himself, and nearly damaging the lab just to catch a fly. He says it's contaminating the lab, to which Jesse, being the voice of reason, replies, we have the least picky customers. We make poison for people who don't care. It just cracks me up. It's one funny line after another. When Walt hits Jesse to get the fly, and then it lands on Walt, Jesse is so delighted to have the chance to hit him back. The look on his face is hilarious. Like I said, the idea is absurd and it's not in tone with the rest of the series, but if you can just let your mind go for one episode, it's consistently funny all the way through. It shows the writers can do comedy too, if you let them, and I welcomed a little relief. In the long term, what made me laugh hardest was just the fact that it got me emotionally invested in wanting to see a fly get killed. Everybody's had that experience trying to catch a fly, so it's relatable. 
In the beginning, you're thinking, geez, Walt, just forget about the fly, which is what Jesse's thinking. So we're in Jesse's place. But as the episode goes on, we go through that change with Jesse. Now we desperately want to see that fly get killed. Jesse even puts himself in danger, standing completely on top of a ladder that's being held by Walt, who's about to fall asleep from sleeping pills. That's a bad idea. And he even comes close to telling Jesse about Jane. So it does have some connections with the rest of the story. But anyway, that final moment when that fly lands in front of Jesse, he goes into like a Clint Eastwood stare down. There's all these close-ups. He's got the magazine rolled up in his pocket. He reaches for it. He swats the fly. And then in slow motion, we see the fly hit the floor and bounce. <laughs> I lost my mind. I was laughing for hours. I mean, the fly even makes a sound when it hits. Like, <laughs> as if a fly hitting a floor would make a sound. And then the way Jesse reacts, when he kills the fly, he gets so excited, like, yeah, bitch! It's one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. I'm not exaggerating. It's probably because so much tension builds up to that moment. I'm not just laughing at the fact that a fly swatting scene was given the slow motion treatment of an action sequence. No, I think mostly I'm laughing at the fact that the whole episode built up to that moment and made me care so much to see it happen. I just watched a 47 minute show in suspense on the edge of my seat the whole time over a fucking fly. And that burst of laughter I had was a more pleasurable experience than all the anxiety I felt the rest of the series. So that's why I have to say it's my favorite. One thing we can agree, Breaking Bad is an excellent show. All the actors, all the writers, creator Vince Gilligan, and everybody involved did an amazing job. Bravo. Now, tell me what are some of the other best shows of all time that I should see?